In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate a technique for creating a realistic vector image based on a photo using the Mesh Fill tool. The work process and example come from Corel Draw Master Daniel Pais. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. I'm starting with this image of a sneaker. For this technique, it's best to start by dividing up the image into distinct regions, in this case by color. I have 14 regions here, some white, some black, and some red. Each of these regions will be overlaid with its own mesh. I'll start with region 7. All of the shapes I'll be working with can be based on rectangles. With the rectangle tool, I'll loosely trace this area, then right-click and convert the rectangle to a curve. Next, I'll apply a mesh fill to this curve, starting with the default two horizontal and vertical divisions. To make it easier to fit the mesh to the region's shape, I'll select all of the mesh segments and convert them to lines. And while the entire mesh is still selected, because I want to see what's underneath the mesh, I'll set its transparency to 100%. Now I'll drag nodes to fit the shape of the region, keeping the center of the mesh around the center of the region. Mesh divisions can be added by double-clicking, and when it comes time to apply colors to nodes, I'll want to differentiate where the folds and stitches appear. So I'll double-click here to create an extra horizontal and vertical division, and move nodes to surround the stitched area. Because the color changes in these sections, I'll add other sets of nodes here and here. Now comes the magic of mesh painting. I'll marquee select these nodes along the bottom because they all share a similar color from the image. Selected nodes appear in black. Now I'll use the sample mesh fill color eyedropper, whose shortcut is Command Shift E, and click a color near one of the nodes. I can't see the results on the mesh yet because the mesh fill is still completely transparent. I'll do the same for these nodes, and I can select additional nodes with the Shift key. As I continue selecting and painting, it's quick and easy to use the shortcut key to get the eyedropper. I'll check my mesh by selecting all nodes and bringing the mesh back to full opacity. The nodes I painted look good, painted by gradient from one node to its neighboring nodes. I still have to paint the nodes along the areas that are currently white. I'll go back to transparent nodes, paint the missing areas, and check again to see any nodes that are still left out. Once I have the whole mesh painted, I'll select it and move it to the side to be sure that its colors look correct. This technique of starting with a rectangular mesh can even be used on an irregularly shaped area like this one. Note that this mesh overlaps with the red mesh just below, and when I move this mesh, it includes some of the red. The all red mesh is here in the objects inspector, and the white and red mesh is here further down. So the red mesh covers the neighboring mesh, mimicking how this area looks in the original image and how the shoe is actually made. Once the meshes are complete, I can start on some of the finer details. There are stitches all over this shoe, which I can see when I hide the filled meshes. I'll use the Bezier tool to trace this stitch, going point to point. Then I'll switch to the Shape tool, select all nodes, and convert to curves with smooth nodes. Now I can set an outline width, choose a line style to match, and match the stitch color as well. The top of the shoe has some vent holes, which can be represented with ellipses that have no outline and a circular fountain fill. The bottom of the sole is a series of copied mesh fills, each copy resized to fit. For the textured pattern along the sole, I'll start with this set of two fountain-filled curves and repeat them to fill the approximate area. Then with the whole set of curves made into a group, I'll move it up and use the envelope tool to fit the group to the shape of the sole. For the shoelaces, I've used the Bezier tool to trace this section, shaping nodes to fit and not filling the curve yet. 
Then I'll use freehand for the little squiggly stripes within the laces. Now I can fill the black curves and continue to fill in the rest of the laces. And finally, because the shoe is now comprised entirely of vector objects, I can easily make changes. For example, I can generate a color harmony and change the red shades to other colors. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on mesh fills in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.